Hi, how are you doing today? I'm James, uh, the creator of Battle Black as the Absence of Light. Uh, so today, um, we're going to take a look at the South Carolina Department of Corrections. Um, this is probably going to be a series of things because I do um, want to talk about mass incarceration. And this is surrounding to me uh, mass incarceration and the reason why um, African-Americans um, over criminalized. Now, we're going to look at two things. We're going to look at the Department of Corrections and expenditures uh, per day. For sake of this video, um, we'll call those who are incarcerated <laughs> inmates. That's uh, something that I don't like to use, so I'll be switching back and forth between day and <sighs> inmate. <laughs> so anyway, uh, now that that's clear, uh, let's prison industries. Prison industries is, uh, was adapted in South Carolina to um, quote unquote give uh, those who are incarcerated job skills, um, employment readiness and whatever other excuses that they use for its incorporation into the South Carolina Department of Corrections. Uh, I want to show you a couple of articles that I find and then we'll build on some things as we go along. Um, <clears throat> there are two companies that is um, within the South Carolina Department of Corrections that we're going to look at. One is Shaw Hardwood Flooring and Anderson Hardwood Flooring. Um, and we, this is something we're just going to build on here. So be patient with me. All right. So we're taking a look at an article from uh, February 15, 2013. Two companies acknowledge exporting U.S. prisoner made goods to Canada um, by David M. Rubin. South Carolina based. Anderson Hardware Floors formally announced in January 2012 that they had been violating Canadian law by exporting products partly manufactured by prisoners into Canada for the past 15 years. This announcement implicitly uh, means the company also violated U.S. law by failing to clearly label the, um, the goods as being produced using prison labor. So real quick, this is uh, nothing short of um, a sweatshop in a sense that's uh, within the South Carolina Department of Corrections. Now, um, on to the second paragraph. Uh, well, let's just skip down a little further. Let's get down here. Uh, just trying to make a real quick point and then move on. You know, it was illegal for them to ship goods there. All right, so that's the end of that part. Um, just making a basis to show you that these companies are within the South Carolina Department of Corrections. Now, Anderson Hardwood Floors uh, partners with the South Carolina Prison gives prisoners a chance to gain uh, woodworking skills. The scene looks like a uh, large shop that works with hardwoods. Veneers graded, glue, planks are cut, employees lift and load sheets of veneer on the presses, push buttons, and check the results. All right, so that's the process of um, how these hardwood floors are created. Now, it says here that um, it is a medium. Okay, Tiger River Correction Institution of Entry, South Carolina, so it's broke as both a prison and a factory. It is a medium security institution that also houses an operation of Anderson Hardwood Floors based in nearby Clinton, South Carolina. Anderson's operation of 250 employees is the largest of seven many factories run within the state's prisons um, by corporations. Now, um, there are uh, PI factories in several prisons across the state. Um, several uh, who produce hardwood flooring or, you know, maybe at this point they have come to an end. I haven't spoken with anyone in SEDC concerning this. Um, now, the idea is to put inmates to work in a real world working environment, um, says Tony Ellis, the state's director of prison industries. 
Uh, they learn how to maintain production, job skills, and quality control. They learn to be responsible for completing the job. You want to to incarcerate them and let them pay for whatever penalty is imposed on them by society, but you want to hopefully change the behavior that got them there in the first place, Ellis says. South Carolina uh, prisoners' participation in the federal program called PIE Prison uh, Industries Enhancement is entirely voluntarily, according to Ellis. The jobs are highly coveted by inmates, he adds. The $7 to $10 hour wages that Anderson pays for inmates' work is divvied up in several ways. Now, what I really want to get down to is this major thing. Some of the pay goes to state for room and board. Some help support prison and families. And a portion is earmarked for crime victim reparation. And some of it is placed in savings accounts established for each prisoner participating in the program since 1996. Uh, in the program, period. Sorry about that. Since 1996, Anderson has paid $7.3 million in wages. And... The next sentence starts with an industry leader. So we'll just leave it there for a second. Now, um, so some things that we uh, gathered out of these two articles so far is that um, Canada obviously views prison labor as nothing less than a sweatshop. So they stopped Anderson um, for shipping their products. And Shaw, we'll, we'll read another article concerning that, from shipping their products into uh, Canada. So this lets you know that this type of labor outside of the United States is not really uh, supported by other countries <laughs> or not supported at all by other countries. Now, um, we get to see that since 1996, um, Anderson uh, has made off of prison labor, $7.3 million. Now we back up a little bit and they start talking about they, work, they earn $7 to $10 an hour. And the pay that these guys receive is divvied up in several ways. Some of their pay, <laughs> not the $7.3 million, but some of their pay goes towards room and board. Now, <laughs> now you have individuals who are incarcerated by the South Carolina Department of Corrections. The South Carolina Department of Corrections receive federal funding to house um, individuals <laughs> and they're charging them out of their pay to live in prison. Do you catch that? Okay, so that's right, the room and board, and then some help supports prisoner families. Now, the major portion, I think about 30%, maybe even a little higher, uh, goes to the workers' family members or to support the children. However, if this does not go to their pay is this not earmarked about instead of 30 I believe maybe 20% 20 to 30% going to their family almost 60% goes to victim advocacy that's a large difference um, the next video I'll try to have like a stub that shows the cost and how it comes out um, now uh, and then the rest is placed in a savings account. Now we see that since 1996, they only paid out $7.3 million. Let's look at how much they earned. In its top 100 review of all flooring manufacturers, including carpet and tile, Floor Focus Magazine last May listed Anderson 48 out of 100 48 based on an estimated 62.7 million dollars in sales in 2001. Now, let's go on down. We make four to fifteen dollars per square foot. All right, let's go on down right here. 
handcrafted product, much as it is done by prisoners, now accounts for about 20% of sales, Finkley says, because inmates have the necessary time and interest we're develop, um, we're, uh, and interest. We're developing products to do in prison that we couldn't do on the outside, he says. So what they're saying here is that out of this $62.7 million in sales, 20% of the sales are counted because of this inmate labor, prisoner labor. Now, and then they're going further to say, this is in 2001, guys. This is going further to say that they're developing products more products to do in prison so we can guarantee that their cells have risen and then i guess before the video is over we can look to see what their recent sales are and just do a comparison off of the 20 percent so if we do 20 percent of 62.7 i don't even have to grab a calculator for this because 10 is 6.2 so 10 more is 12.4 with 7 is 5 12.54 should be 12.54 million dollars in sales in 2001 that was accredited to prison labor. 12.54 million dollars that was accredited to prison labor. Now, these guys only will pay. Seven point three million dollars, and this is for every institution. In it. it's two hundred and fifty guys in one institution that make seven and ten dollars an hour. We can do the yearly time, and all of that stuff. Um, so seven dollars an hour for two hundred and fifty people. I'm gonna do a calculator for this, but it shouldn't be but um, seventeen fifty or somewhere in that range. Let's just see. Um, two fifty. Times seven, seventeen fifty. <laughs> I just want to be correct. So two fifty times seven is seventeen fifty. All right. Uh, uh, so ten times two fifty is twenty five hundred. Now over fifty two weeks. Let's just do that over fifty two weeks. It's ninety one thousand dollars at seven dollars an hour. So this doesn't definitely doesn't account for just one prison. Um, they're not, they're making a killing. That's all I can really say about this. I, I can't really, <laughs> they're making a killing. This, this is just giving you an inside look at what SEDC is doing. And then we'll build on this as we go further along. We have, uh, you know, reason why guys are being incarcerated, targeted within the black community. And I think this is just the tip of it, um, of why they're being targeted. Um, one is prison labor. Um, two is job security. <laughs> These guys are making millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars and they only paying out pennies, pennies and pennies and then they're taking most of it because um, SEDC as we read back here are, uh, are housing these guys. Um, in prison now, uh, or charging to keep guys in prison, charging them for what they should get when they put them there and they're getting government funding for it. Now, there is something within this article I want to show you about who actually owns uh, these companies. Um, and I apologize. All right, here we go. So, we'll just start with the first par paragraph. Um, South Carolina-based Anderson Hardwood Floors formally announced in June 2012 and violating Canadian law by exporting products partly manufactured by prisoners into Canada for the past 15 years. Now, you'll read these are similar articles, right? Um, or if not the same article, and I skipped something and stopped. So it's the same article. Yeah, it's the same article that I read the first time in you know, yeah, it's the same article that I read the first time. I just skipped over some things. Anderson, a division of Shaw Industries Group, which is owned by Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway Incorporated. All right, so that's the point that I wanted to make. Those are the things that I was trying to build on, and I wanted you to 
read these things right along with me. Now, so we understand a couple things thus far. We have uh, mass incarceration. We have guys that's being targeted. We have, um, you know, here in Columbia, we had uh, issues that was raised some years ago about gangs, gang violence. We have a sheriff that stated he wanted to get rid of gangs. Um, and now we're finding out that there's a prison industry system that was implemented in South Carolina Department of Corrections. Um, and they've been operating, I believe, since like 96. And in 2001, they paid out throughout all prison industries, they paid out in South Carolina $7.3 million in salaries. And they earned $62.7 million just in one year. And prison labor accounted for 20% of that, which doing the math, math on that, math, <laughs> I'm saying math, math on that, it equals out to $12.54 million. <laughs> it's a lot of money. Um, and then most of that is taken out of the checks um, of prisoners before they even see it. Which, in the next video, I'm not sure I have the checks though, so I'm able to show you those deductions. Uh, now, let's look at another thing. Let's look at something else. So here we have the actual uh, cost per inmate. South Carolina Direct Department of Corrections cost per inmate in physical years 1988 through 2017. So we have the physical year in the far left column. Based on state funds spent, we have the annual cost per inmate, the daily cost per inmate, and then based on all funds spent, we have the annual cost per inmate in the far right columns, and the daily cost per inmate. So here we go. All right, so starting in 1998, the annual cost per inmate was $12,213. The daily cost, $33.37. And then based on all funds spent, it was $12,421 and $33 and 94 cents. Now, I'm not sure what is accounted for in all cost or all funds. We know that, you know, that feed them, clothe them, house them, which we find out that some uh, prisoners or uh, those who are incarcerated are paying for housing. Then, uh, what else? Uh, Health care, uh, probably transportation, and all of those things. Um, but now, in 2012 on, it just began to drastically, drastically increase all the way to 2017, where it cost $19,000 a day, um, a year for, uh, based on state funds. So that, so that's the difference, state funds, and it says all funds, so state and federal funds, and I guess wherever else, one bucket money. <laughs> the dumbasses he gives to them. Okay, but that's just an assumption. Um, daily cost is up to $52.20, and the annual cost uh, per inmate is $20,925 daily. It's $57. And 33 cents. Now, while you're here, I just want to do some math. Let's 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 have some fun. I want to look at some other things concerning statistics. Because if we can just do some real quick math, and we can look into some, some other things here. Um, we can look into exactly why um, or how much is spent. Based on how many inmates are currently incarcerated in SCBC and just all those things like that. Um, that's just some stuff that I like to do. Maybe you know it's better in a presentation, but 
We don't have time for a presentation. <laughs> Man, I thought I could just pull this stuff up. Like, click it up, but I can't. So I'm going to have to do that another way, another time. So hold on. Let me just go back. I'll just look it up on my phone real quick. Let's see if you see. Look up how many people are currently incarcerated in SEDC. So we can start seeing. And this is just for the average individual that's sitting at home. This is not for you know, statisticians and all that stuff like that. People who, you know, um, actually do, you know, do this uh, research on a daily basis and stuff like that. This is for people who never even thought about, you know, um, you know, these things. So right now, uh, as of today, August 27, 2017, right? General Housing, 16,246. So the physical count was 15,464. And then we'll just leave that alone because then you have other programs, um, restrictive housing where people are in actually lock up and things like that. So 15,464, right? And you know, when we get, you get funding, you're going to get funding for that entire year. So, um, 20,920. Oh, <laughs> there's a lot of numbers, man. There's a lot of numbers. So we know the total count at 15,464. And I believe that's correct. Even if it's not, we're just doing some quick math. And if it's just a little bit off. So 15,464 individuals who are incarcerated in SEDC. Um, <clears throat> now, times 20,000. $923,584,200 is spent on an annual basis or will be spent fiscal year 2017 May. That's a lot of money <laughs> to house people. We have a serious problem here. I have a serious problem here. But we're going to continue this because we have to find out the breakdown of where the money is being spent and all that. But we're going to continue this conversation because I have what I believe is an idea that cuts back on spending and costs per individual who's incarcerated in SBC. And also, I believe that I have. A solution to recidivism, and we probably won't be able to solve the mass incarceration problem just yet. But just a solution to recidivism called the Joshua Project, and a solution to spin in SEBC. This is just a quick introduction into it all, and hopefully you'll stay tuned for the videos to come. Um, so what we found out today is prison industries is within the South Carolina Department of Corrections that they're earning from the South Carolina Department of Corrections in 2001. It's 2017 was $62.7 million um, and state spending for this year, state and federal spending for this year 
would be $323,584,200. Well, $3,223,584,200. And Will be the money that's spent um, in the South Carolina Department of Correction. Housing, 15, well, just say, round it up, 15,500 15, individuals who are incarcerated. <laughs> that's a lot to say when I can just say inmates, but this is the word that I try to stay away from. Now, so we found out how much money is being spent. How much money is being earned by prison industries? Who owns prison industries? Uh, which is uh, well, Anderson Hardwood Floors. Who owns Anderson Hardwood Floors? Berkshire Hathaway, which is owned by Warren Buffett, or he has a certain interest in Berkshire Hathaway. Now, um, I think that's all for me. It's enough for me because my brain is tossing now. And hopefully, it you know this is pretty clear. I hope there's some information that I can share with you, and we can build on in the next video as we move forward into the topic of mass incarceration. I'm James. This is Battle Black as the Absence of Light. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more. Love you.